In this short video, we're going to look at three telescopes that my kids have been using for years and why these three designs are the best telescopes to get kids excited about the universe and science in general. Hey everyone, John Reed here, author of 50 Things to See with a Telescope for Kids and about a dozen other science-based books for kids and adults as well. Here's something that makes me very sad. Most telescopes marketed to kids are terrible, and I'm guessing many viewers have purchased a scope that didn't work out for them, so you can probably relate to this. When I was a kid, my dad bought us a small telescope. I tried on so many occasions to see something cool, but I never did. Not the moon, not Jupiter, not the rings of Saturn. Fast forward a few years, and instead of a degree in astrophysics, I got a degree in finance and got a job as a financial accountant for a bleach company. Now, fortunately, when I was 27, I learned how to use a telescope and was so inspired by the beauty of outer space that at 33, I quit my job, went back to school, and finally, at the age of 37, graduated with that degree in astrophysics I should have started almost 20 years earlier. I hear so many stories of people who buy telescopes that are either not designed for beginners or in most cases, not designed for looking at space at all. And these telescopes? I like to call these telescopes bird feeder telescopes because that's literally all they're designed to look at. Amazon is particularly guilty of this. Type telescope into Amazon and there are almost no telescopes here that are designed for looking at space. In fact, they're all bird feeder telescopes. There are even popular science communicators on social media who are pushing these telescopes for affiliate dollars without knowing anything about them, without realizing that they could be stunting a child's science education by giving them an inaccurate idea of what a telescope should be and what it should be capable of. I believe a telescope, when used correctly, is a powerful tool for inspiring our next generation. I believe that children are fascinated by the telescope itself, even more so than the objects they're observing. Now, if you've watched any of my previous videos, you'll know that I have five requirements for a beginner telescope. You might think, well, I'll cut some corners here, get this cheap telescope, and see if my kids like this hobby. Don't do that. That's like buying a guitar without strings and expecting them to learn how to play. These five rules are even more important for kids' telescopes. Requirement number one, does the telescope have at least four inches or 100 millimeters of aperture? This is usually in the name of the telescope itself. The Celestron Omni 102 has 102 millimeters of aperture. Aperture determines the resolution of the telescope. Any telescope, even the hobby killer ones, will magnify the moon. But magnification is largely irrelevant without aperture. A small aperture telescope magnified to 250 times, like it says on the box, will show you nothing but a blurry mess. If you want to see fine details on the surface of the moon, get a decent view of Saturn's rings, and start to view deep sky objects like globular clusters in detail, you need aperture. Requirement number two, does the telescope come with a red dot finder? Here's the thing, a lot of beginner telescopes come with little finder scopes, and I'll tell you, adults can barely use these things. Not only is it difficult to see through them, but the image is most often reversed. So as you push the telescope one way, the stars through the viewfinder move the other. They're incredibly frustrating. Instead, look for red dot or bullseye finders. These don't magnify the sky at all. They simply project a red dot or bullseye onto the sky. Requirement number three, the telescope should be able to move effortlessly in any direction. This means no telescopes with EQ in the name. EQ telescopes are very restrictive in their movements, which causes significant frustration for beginners. A small Dobsonian is the easiest telescope to move. Just hold it by the opening and you can point it however you want. Requirement number four. Does the telescope stay where you put it when you let go? This pretty much eliminates rod and yoke style mounts as well as anything on what looks like a camera tripod. I've had several of these telescopes and they are so frustrating. An object will drift out of frame and when you go to follow it by pushing on the mount, it will stick and then jump too far and then jump back. It's just not any fun. Requirement number five. The telescope should be easy to use when pointed high in the sky. If it's a refractor, the thing to look for here is the diagonal. It should be a 90 degree diagonal, not 45. If you look at a bird feeder telescope, it's pretty much useless when pointed higher than about 30 degrees or at, you know, space. All right, three tips for stargazing with kids in general, then we'll go into more detail with each individual scope. Tip number one, stargaze as a family. Stargazing is a hobby best enjoyed with other people, and young kids left alone with a telescope will most likely not be able to find stuff. 
they'll need your help. The first 10 pages of 50 Things to See with a Telescope for Kids are really for the parents. You need to be the ones to learn how to use the telescope, and you need to be the ones to find things in space. Only then have the kids look through the telescope at what you've found. As parents, it's our job to teach these skills to our kids. Tip number two, parents, learn to stargaze without a telescope and teach your kids about the constellations. There are only four or five major constellations visible in a given season. For example, if you can identify Orion, Taurus, Gemini, and Canis Major in winter, you'll much more easily be able to find deep sky objects once you've moved over to the telescope. In summer, most of the good stuff is found near Sagittarius and Scorpius, as well as near an asterism called the Northern Cross and the Summer Triangle. This is why all of my stargazing books, including 50 Things to See with a Telescope for Kids, are organized by season. Tip number three, there's more to stargazing than just the telescope. You'll need chairs. Most people don't think about it, but stargazing from a chair is much easier than standing, even with a telescope. And dress warmly, even in summer. Drink lots of fluids and turn off the screens as any source of white light will ruin your night vision. Red flashlights are a must for stargazing so that your eyes can adapt to the dark, allowing you to see the stars. All right, here are the three examples of telescopes that are great for kids. This is the Z100. I paid about $100 for this back in 2021. And as with all these scopes, there has been a lot of inflation in the past couple years, but this telescope is also identical to the Orion Skyscanner, which is currently priced at around $129 in 2023. So if you're on a budget, that's the one to get. The Z100 and the Orion Skyscanner are what's called mini Dobsonians. It's a Newtonian telescope on a Lazy Susan. They generally come with two eyepieces and a red dot finder, and they pass all five of my tests. We've had a lot of fun with this little scope over the years. This is the Explore Scientific 114. This is by far the easiest telescope I've ever used. Now I found the optical performance to be less than that of a 100 millimeter refractor, but this is made up for by the fact that it's so incredibly easy to use. We've used this for the moon and planets, as well as some of the brighter deep sky objects like the Dragonfly Cluster. But be careful though, there are a lot of Newtonian telescopes with 114 millimeters of aperture that have been bird jones These are small Newtonians with focal ratios of eight or higher. What the companies have done is put an extra lens inside the focusing assembly. What they're doing is doubling the magnification for marketing purposes and compensating for the poor optical quality of the mirror. The result is a telescope that's harder to use and views that simply aren't that great. Now we come to the Celestron Omni 102. We picked this up at Costco the winter before last for around $200, and it has been by far the best beginner telescope at an entry price point that I've ever used. Unlike the other two telescopes, this one has slow motion controls for following objects around the sky. This telescope is also upgradable to two inch eyepieces, and the optics are stellar. Now, if you have a telescope in mind and you'd like to know if it meets my five requirements, let me know in the comments and I'll take a quick look and simply reply with either yes or no or pass or fail. Now this video didn't really go into how to use a telescope, but I do have a video called how to use any telescope. I'll link to that video below. Be sure to watch that one next. Thanks for watching to the end of this video. Don't forget to subscribe to get the most out of your stargazing experience. And remember, the future is looking up.